Everyone, there's three questions with Taylor. There we go. Oh, man. Taylor, I actually, uh, Taylor, Taylor is just, is literally the most brand new person in education I've ever had on the podcast. Uh, and I don't want to be like, Amber Teeman has been on my podcast. This is Amber's daughter. And I saw Taylor, who I saw when she was in high school. And then all of a sudden, Amber tagged you on something mm -hmm. I had wrote. And I'm like, why are you tagging Taylor? And I kind of knew, but I didn't want to know. <laughs> Is Taylor teaching now? She said, yes. So I'm like, yeah. I want her on the podcast because I've never had someone who's just entering the profession. And I want to just really talk to you. So Taylor, thanks for being on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm excited. And we, we got to talk a little bit. We, you know, I remember, um, this is what threw me off because I remember meeting you, your family was going, I can't remember where you were going. You were going on vacation and we were Disney, in, I think. were you at Disney too? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I remember that you're going to Disney and I met you there and I just, I just, I I've, I've actually seen you kind of grow up on social mm -hmm. media and then I met you and yeah, it's, it's cool. So Taylor actually teaches at, I'm going to say this, it's, I know I might not be saying with a Texas accent, but it's like, is it Maybank? Am I saying that right? Yeah, Maybank. Maybank mm -hmm. ISD. And you, like, we're this. We're recording this August 19th. You haven't taught a full week mm -mm. in education, right? Yeah. Nope. So, so, I, I, so the three questions that Taylor and I talked about this before, I typically ask these three questions. Who's a teacher that inspired you? We're going to do that one. Who's an administrator that inspired you? Can't ask you that one because there's only yeah. really one answer you can give. And if you don't give mm -hmm. the answer, I don't want you to get in trouble. Yeah. And then the other question is, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self, which you can't really give at this time because yeah. <laughs> you could maybe give what advice would you give to your first week self? Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. You haven't done a full week yet, which I, I love. Just three days. Yeah. <laughs> I love. Okay. So I, we just, Taylor and I made up questions. So first question, mm -hmm. I know, I know at least you went to school, <laughs> right? Yeah. And yeah. by the way, anyone who's listening, uh, Taylor is literally the opposite of me. When I went to university, she got done in less than two years for a four-year degree. And it took me six <laughs> to get done a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I told her, I feel I'm a little bit, I, I felt really old, <laughs> but she got done so quick. I said, no, I don't feel old anymore. I just feel dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer, you know, as you get older, you yeah. prefer to feel dumb than old. All right. So, all right, Taylor, very first question. You look back at your, your career as a student, you're now mm -hmm. a teacher. If you think of a teacher that inspired you, who's someone you can think of and why? So my ninth and 10th grade teacher, her name is Miss Philippos. She was my humanities teacher, was just a fancy word of saying like advanced reading. Mm -hmm. um, but she was the kind of teacher who knew that reading was not a subject that anyone liked. Like no one really enjoyed going to English class. But she just had this way of, of planning these assignments and making it more more about us than actually about what we were doing. And then in the end, because we just had such a good time and we had such a good connection with her that we ended up really just being in, in into the content. So it just kind of fell hand in hand. She didn't really stress, you know, you have to know this, you have to know this, you have to know this. She just kind of wanted us to enjoy what we were doing. So if we were enjoying what we were doing, we ended up loving what we were doing. And then now all this time later, I'm teaching the same thing as her. So she's someone I've really been leaning on um for advice and everything like that uh, okay well first of all i know you've never listened to the podcast but miss philippos gets an air horn <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up, bud. so so that 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 is like, awesome because i think sometimes we one of the things that's really important as an educator is that you have passion for what you actually teach mm -hmm. and i re i remember when i first started teaching there was things i was really passionate about and mm -hmm. then and then things that no one else wanted to teach that yeah. I was forced to teach. Yeah. And I was like, oh God, like I can't fake this too. And as mm -hmm. an administrator, that was, that was really important to me to work with teachers and say like, what, what do you want to teach? Like, mm -hmm. what is the thing that you want to teach the most? Yeah. Because I know just like Mrs. Philippos, that, that if you have that excitement, then kids are going to be excited. And as, it, as yeah. I'm listening to you, mm -hmm. it was, it was like, you kind of didn't even know you're learning. Yeah, right? yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah. Right? That's yeah. kind of fascinating. So I love that. So Miss Philippos, if you're listening, 
And I bet you she's going to be so proud of you for <laughs> how cool is that? That's such I a mean, cool I'm thing. So, yeah. All right. So you are one. You, you haven't even finished a full week, which I love. I yeah. love this. Okay. So you haven't even f- finished a full week. So mm-hmm. as this is one of the questions that you and I talked about, as you kind of go into the, your very first year of teaching, what do you kind of see as maybe being one of your biggest challenges, you know, mm-hmm. or maybe, I don't know, not in education, but for you specifically, you know, yeah. as you go into your first year, what do you see as a challenge coming up? I think it's probably, I get hyper-focused on one thing. So if I have a student who is just falling behind, I I, I have a feeling that I'm going to get hyper-focused on just them to make mm-hmm. sure that they need to be at the level. And we have pretty big class sizes. So I think probably my biggest challenge is going to be figuring out how to address the class as a whole, but also making sure that my highest of the highs are being challenged, but then I have the lowest of the lows who are being supported. So I think finding the balance between activities and games and stations and all the things I'll be able to help everybody instead of right. just focusing on, you know, groups of my students. Um, I think that's going to be a challenge, but I'm learning. So I'm hoping that it'll, it'll all work out. Yeah. It's a, you know, so it's really fascinating. You say that. I was in a workshop yesterday Mm-hmm. And we were talking about exactly what you were saying, because sometimes we become so hyper focused on mm-hmm. students are, you know, can be very intelligent, but struggle academically with what we are teaching. Yeah. And and then what happens is we get so focused Some and sometimes it's not they struggle academically. It, mm-hmm. Well, maybe they do struggle academically, but then it becomes a behavioral thing. I was the kid yeah. that. When I struggle academically, then I became a behavioral issue, right? <laughs> then I that that can, yeah. you know that that's that that can actually happen quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And I said, when when you focus all of your attention, you have a bunch of students, and it's the same thing with adults who mm-hmm. want to grow, yes, who aren't, yeah. And you have to find that balance. And this is why this mm-hmm. is why I love you know Taylor. One of the reasons I wanted you to have on the pa- on the podcast. I'm a big advocate. I don't, I've heard people say this to you and I'm maybe I'm, I don't want to scare you <laughs> that, you know, like, Hey, if you haven't taught 10 years, like don't, you know, you just kind of sit back and watch and learn. And I'm like, yeah. no, you have people go- coming into the very first year of teaching mm-hmm. who have such brilliant ideas and I can learn mm-hmm. from anybody. And like, just your answer, it shows them. Mat- I can, honestly <laughs> can't believe you are <laughs> how quickly you graduated and you, you know, that took me years and years to figure yeah. that out. So mm-hmm. That's absolutely awesome. I love that answer. All right. Okay. So the last question that we had to make up, mm-hmm. <laughs> the last one, okay. Very first year of teaching, mm-hmm. like what we talked about the challenge. What's your like hope for this first year? What do you hope happens? Right. And it's, that's such an open-ended question. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to give me an answer, but what do you, what do you hope happens this year? I hope that the, the, the school district that I'm in, we have kids from all walks of life. Mm-hmm. So everyone is so different. They're their own person. They all come from different backgrounds and families and all that kind of thing. But I hope that what they can take away from my class is that, you know, no matter what is happening, you know, outside of the building, that if they're in my class when they're in my my intervention period or anything like that, that within that class, we're all going to be a family. We're all going to be friends. We're all going to be we're all going to be really close And that if, you know, anything that's happening outside of school, um, that they're just going to know that they can come to me or they can come to my classroom if they need like five minutes or they need someone to talk to or just any of those things. So I really hope that I can get the kids to open up to me and really just form a relationship with them because I think it will benefit me tremendously in being able to um, teach the content that I'm teaching. I think I can't, I won't be able to have them listen to me for 45 minutes a day if mm-hmm. they aren't, willing to listen to me does that make sense like they need to have a relationship with me first before they're gonna sit and listen to some young teacher you know so that that so, is so actually it's making so much sense that it's bugging me i'm like how do you know this already right <laughs> it is bugging me a little bit because i'm like how do you know this stuff that 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 to me i it took me years to figure this out and mm-hmm. i just so I'm just sitting here. Who taught you? How do you know this? I guess, you know, you grew up in a teacher family. So maybe that's, yeah. that's an advantage yeah. that you have, but there is mm-hmm. a, there is a gentleman and he totally, someone I truly looked up to. Mm-hmm. And he said the, ver- he's, 
and this is why it's bugging me that you know this already because he was like a very gifted administrator and it took mm -hmm. me probably about seven years into my career before he shared this advice with me and yeah. he said and it's totally building on what you just said he said that a teacher that starts off in their career who's really good with relationships and struggles mm -hmm. with curriculum will last a lot longer than the mm -hmm. opposite that yeah the thing is is that if you build that environment mm -hmm. uh, you, your your pedagogical knowledge you know your understanding of the curriculum those things mm -hmm. can develop yeah. i can't make you like kids I, there's no. nothing there's nothing i can do there that's yeah. I, maybe some people say that they can i don't really think you can if you just don't want to be around students yeah. they pick that up real quick so mm -hmm. i just love that answer and this is why i want to have you on the podcast because <laughs> he's you're just like way wiser than i was at this age so <laughs> well, so your you. your kids and uh and how am i am i say it you say it is it maybank am i saying maybank May Maybe because yeah, yeah. I'm saying it, and I, why is there no why? Where is the why? It, oh. It's M A B A N K. It's I don't know. Yeah, Texas, small Texas, town. Texas. So, anyways, mm -hmm. they are they are very blessed to have you. Um, and I, I so he, can we do this? Can we make a promise right now? Mm -hmm. You, this is your first week yeah. of teaching. Mm -hmm. So, I all I ask you is that you reserve a podcast episode in your last week of teaching. Okay, I will. It better be like thirty plus years from now. I don't want it. I don't want it be like six months from now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Deal. We make that deal. Yeah. Deal. I love it. All right. So everyone, <laughs> hey, you can actually connect with uh, Taylor. Uh, you're gonna learn a ton from her, and I'm so I'm so honored, and it's just uh, it's it's really cool to see you uh, in the profession. I know that um, Maybank and your staff is very blessed to have you. And I, I know, and one of the things I appreciate about you really quick, mm -hmm. I you said about how you're still learning. Yeah. And as long as you have that your entire career, you're going to have a very successful career. So everyone, uh, thanks, Taylor, for having me. Thanks for listening. Taylor, it was awesome to talk to you. I can't wait to talk to you more uh, on the next episode. Thank you.